Okay, so we're getting into World War She-Hulk, and this is an editorial mandate story. There's no way it's anything else. Okay, those of you guys who are familiar with comics, you know what that is. For those of you guys who are not, usually writers are given carte blanche to kind of write characters to their own interpretation. There's obvious things they can't do. They can't just indiscriminately kill Spider-Man, right? Like that has to be probably like a main event. It's probably got to go through a lot of approvals before something like that is done. Uh, but then sometimes what Marvel editorial will do, especially if it's part of like a bigger picture, is they'll go to a writer and they'll be like you can write this story however you want to but it needs to end like this right this character needs to end this way or it needs to feature this character at this level of power or focus largely on this character or something like that that's the reason why the phoenix event that jason aaron did in avengers focus on echo because an echo tv show is coming out and marvel wanted to raise the profile of the character and it's why this is happening because while i do love the ending of this story the way we got there is kind of stupid right so uh so what you end up doing here is basically picking up with She-Hulk, who's essentially behind like a locked door, just kind of like tethered down, going through a whole bunch of just mental and, and psychic torment, right? Just basically being tortured, being brainwashed, that kind of a thing. And so before we find out what's going on there, you actually jump back to Avengers Mountain, right? Tony Stark and these guys where Gorilla Man just kind of takes off through the whole place and then basically ends up uh, summoning what is in effect the Winter Guard. And as soon as they showed up, I was like, okay, this story is going to go downhill. And it does. Uh, but the Winter Guard, these guys, I mean, they're, they're, no one cares about the Winter guard right i mean well no you know what i take that back dark star is pretty awesome dark star has the ability to manipulate dark force energy which is basically like living darkness essentially and then you end up getting crimson dynamo who's kind of cool right in the rest of the roster now an important thing to note here is red widow we still don't know who red widow is we still don't know anything about her all we know is that it's a chick there's a lot of theory and speculation going on out there that it's natasha romanoff that is black widow but we don't really know for sure a lot of people are also saying that it's a sister of natasha romanoff right that she's basically being brought back or kind of given a, a higher profile and things are going from there we don't necessarily know what's happening all we know is that in the midst of all this because of the fact that uh gorilla man has essentially given the winter guard access to the uh, to avengers mountain that it allows them to complete their mission which is to basically kidnap she hulk now the argument here is that they're taking she hulk because of damage she had done to moscow at some point in time basically trashing the place but crimson dynamo actually ends up deploying hulkbuster armor which basically encases uh she -Hulk Hulk, and then whisks her away, right? And then the rest of the Winter Guard basically just ends up taking off. Now, of course, in terms of Gorilla Man and why he did what he did, Gorilla Man was, is a guy named Kenneth Hale. Essentially, somewhere along the line, he had killed the previous Gorilla Man and then was cursed and then became the new Gorilla Man himself. This guy doesn't matter. This guy's never really mattered. He's never really been... Why well, take that back? When he was part of Agents of Atlas with Jimmy Woo, he was cool. But outside of that, he's never really had any major relevance in Marvel Comics. So it's interesting to see that he's here. Of course, the motivation here seems to be that he was working with Dracula and Dracula said he would give, you know, Gorilla Man what it is that he couldn't get on his own, presumably to kill him. And in fact, he says that, right? He says that like Red Widow would kill him, something that he simply can't do. He's basically, you know, more or less immortal. And in turn, Red Widow's like, no, nah, it's not going to happen. So she just leaves him to his fate. So he's just kind of there hanging out but nonetheless at that point you switch over to she hulk herself there's what's essentially a kangaroo trial going on here right where it's like a mock trial it's a sham it's really just kind of being carried out but the, the end result is already determined in terms of what's going to happen of course she's found guilty of her actions and like attacking moscow and all that kind of stuff and so you basically end up finding out that this place where she's being tormented and being tortured is the red room now that's kind of an interesting thing because the red room itself has been depicted in different ways over the years in marvel comics there was a time when the Red Room was just a training facility, and indeed it basically is. It's Russia's answer to specifically Weapon X. The Winter Guard is kind of their answer to Weapons Plus slash the Avengers, but uh, but but the Red Room itself is like their version of Weapon X, the program that made Wolverine, which was a joint venture between Canada's Department K, or Department H rather, and the United States CIA, right? So it was kind of their thing. But at the end of the day, of course, the Avengers aren't going to let one of their own be kidnapped and just sort of ran off. And so they end up basically tracking everybody down to to the Siberian tundra, right? Somewhere not too far away from the Gulag. And then you basically have Iron Man and Captain America who initially respond. They're able to overcome the, the, the early guards, you know, fairly readily. And then in turn, She-Hulk breaks out of her own facility and then in turn kind of starts running amok throughout the place, right? Like literally trying to get out, trying to break through. But across, or at least during this entire process, she keeps having these crazy visions of like black widows and things like that. So there's a lot of mental conditioning going on here, right? I mean, she says like, we are widows, right? We're Omega Reds 
guards and were winter soldiers like we were basically trained here in the red room we were trained here and we were made what we are but then you end up getting this revelation that the whole perspective of her like breaking out and escaping that none of it happened that it's all basically just this mental torture that she's experiencing and that what they're actually doing is they're planting subliminal messages right kind of a subliminal mission inside of her own mind so that at a future point in time they can use her for their own ends now the funny thing about this is that in the midst of all that with captain america showing up and iron man showing up that they are able to essentially hold their own against the winter guard to a degree and that leads to carol danvers showing up then of course she's met by the arrival of dark star so the two of them fight which is a fight that nobody asked for and then like carol danvers ends up asking for help from thor seemingly so like the only appearance you get from him is he like throws his hammer and it knocks out dark star and that's basically it right so that's that seems like a colossal waste of thor but the thing about this is that jennifer walters is constantly experiencing what is in effect mental torment right just over and over and over again mental torment just being tortured until she really actually does break out of the facility and then at that point she's basically in rampage mode she's not really thinking clearly she's not really thinking rationally and so that's where you end up getting the world war hulk concept i mean if anything this is more like a like a poor man's world war hulk event right and nowhere near the same level of of gravitas or impact or or meaning in any capacity but she basically ends up escaping the facility and there's really not a whole lot they can do because she's raged out so much right because she's so hulked out and then you end up basically finding out that the actual mission of of she hulk once she's deployed at least as it's stated by uh by red widow is that one she's now referred to as the winter hulk is basically what they call her and two her mission as it exists is to basically destroy the atlanteans that's the mission of winter hulk the winter guard kidnaps she hulk brainwashes her to kill the atlanteans that's that's what happens that's that's the motivation so as you guys can expect <laughs> <laughs> going through this story uh essentially once she gets to the kingdom of atlantis of course gorilla man is there trying to help her out and you know whatever uh gorilla man is it's for the most part gorilla man's actions here are more like personal atonement right the desire to kind of make up for his past misdeeds more so than anything else the fact that he betrayed the avengers not just once but a couple times and the fact that everything that she hulk is going through is a direct result of his actions so there's a little bit of character redemption going on and so far as what they're trying to do here the other part of this and this is something that i hope you guys notice is that that winter hulk is kind of almost seems to be a, a little bit lucid periodically but basically has this inner turmoil going in where it's essentially jennifer walters trying to overcome her hulk persona now that's the big difference here and that's where kind of like the world war hulk element comes into play right world war hulk it wasn't really a rampaging hulk that was beyond any semblance of control it was just a really really pissed off hulk i mean like the super angry rampaging hulk that couldn't be stopped that was heart of the monster hulk right that was was, that was a crazy situation but what goes on here is essentially this idea of of her kind of being controlled right now when it comes to the nature of jennifer walters as she hulk that was a big differentiation between herself and banner right and the incredible hulk that the incredible hulk right banner would turn into the hulk and wouldn't usually remember what happened right especially when you were dealing with savage hulk and savage hulk wouldn't really know what was going on with banner with she hulk it wasn't that way that jennifer walters could actually turn into she hulk at will and she was totally lucid she would basically remember everything her incredible hulk persona was more a source of power that she could tap into as opposed to a wholly separate personality that would take over and so that's that's one of the big differences what you're seeing here is really more akin to she hulk falling closer in line with the traditional incredible hulk but literally right like like red widow tells her her boss she's like yes sir the asset is on site locked and loaded i've never had cause in my life to use this particular word but if you'll allow me sir she she is beautiful and her target is in range. No, she has no idea of her true role here, or if she does, she's too driven by rage for it to matter. The Winter Hulk will assassinate the King of Atlantis. Now, the true thing here, I guess it's kind of a misnomer to say she's there to kill the Atlanteans. She's actually there to be a distraction. That the goal of Red Widow and those guys is to wipe out all the Atlanteans. And that She-Hulk is there to just kind of be a distraction, to keep, a, keep Namor the Submariner distracted so they don't really know what's going on. No one really seems to be 
fully aware of what's taking place here. And so, of course, Gorilla Man, again, trying to make up for his past misdeeds, ends up intercepting uh, Red Widow in the water before they can deliver their bomb to wipe out all the Atlanteans. And then, of course, a fight breaks out between Name of the Submariner and Winter Hulk, which is kind of weird to see that Name of the Submariner is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Winter Hulk if she really is amplified in terms of strength and the fact that she's overcoming him. I guess that's more of a testament of how strong she is, but she's literally able to just pummel this guy, right? And then she tells everybody, like she tells all the Atlanteans, evacuate your people and then says, Avengers assemble. And that's when you basically end up realizing she was never really under the control of the Winter Guard at all, right? That she had been taken and seemingly allowed herself to be taken and that she was being conditioned and all that kind of stuff. But as somebody who had been an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., that she was part of the Avengers, she'd been part of the Fantastic Four, that her mental fortitude was so far beyond the Winter Guard's ability to control her that it was all basically a ruse. And once she realized what it was that they were after, that their goal was to destroy the Atlanteans, then she basically snaps back and says, okay, like Avengers assemble, right? And calls everybody together and then everything kind of starts popping off and like Thor shows up and all that kind of cool stuff, you know, and they basically end up, you know, trying to save the day and whatnot. Of course, she's able to overcome all these different forces out there, which is, it's kind of interesting to see her depicted in like this ultra violent, high maddening rage. She's able to, or at least able to go toe to toe with Red She-Hulk for a minute until Red She-Hulk ends up injecting herself basically with Hulk blood and then in turn becomes Hulk out herself, right? So like Red Widow becomes the Hulk, which is, you know, kind of, kind of interesting. They call her the Widow Hulk, which is kind of weird. Uh... Yeah, it's, I mean, I think it's cool, right? That like the Hulk becomes the Widow. I think it's kind of cool, but you know, as the two of them fight and the conflict kind of goes on and on and on and, and so on and so forth, that ultimately uh, Red She-Hulk gets the upper hand and then realizes this bomb is about to go off and it will obliterate all the Atlanteans in the process. And so what she ends up doing is that at the time when the bomb detonates, that she actually absorbs all the energy of the bomb as it explodes. And then in turn is just hypercharged with gamma radiation and then essentially takes off. But with the kind of mental conflict going on in her own head, this idea that she is in turn trying to wrestle control of the Hulk away, right? Jennifer Walters is trying to regain control of herself that basically once she steps off and then quote unquote detonates, if you can call it that, and the smoke clears, that in effect, she reverts back to classic She-Hulk, right? The old school She-Hulk from the John Byrne days, right? Where she had like a very slimming figure and like a great big chest and all that kind of stuff. She ends up reverting back to that. I love seeing that this classic She-Hulk is back. I think it's dumb how we got to this point, but she basically ends up just kind of abandoning her role as an Avenger and then in effect goes back to becoming a lawyer. All this story was meant to do right? The only thing this story was meant to do was to send She-Hulk back to the version that she was before, because that's the version you're going to see in the show. That's basically all it was, right? To turn She-Hulk into the character that you're going to see in the TV show. And that's basically it. I don't know. I, I normally try to not crap on comics, especially with something that Jason Aaron writes, because he's a phenomenal writer. This comic was ass. Like this story was terrible. It was, it was bad, just ridiculously bad. I loved the ending, but everything else about it was dumb. So with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. <laughs> Thank God. And I will catch you all later. Peace.